Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our tech exchange of Booker Compression. We're happy that you take your valuable time to join our webinar today. My name is Marion Odermott and I'm happy to guide you through this presentation today. What is a tech exchange? Actually, it is, as the word already says, it's a technology insight of reciprocating compressors. So today we will, look, we will look into the topic about reliable solutions for dirty gases. Just a few information at the start. This webinar is live and will be recorded. So all your microphones are muted. Um, today, as you can see, we're doing the, the, the webinar with videos on. So you can see the speakers live while they talk. Um, and also, um, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A button, which is either at the bottom or at the top of your navigation bar. Just to keep in mind, if you place any questions anonymously, we can't go back to you later on if we have something to add on. And also, if we have not enough time to answer all your questions, it would be great to literally come back to you later. But before we start, I would like to point out again the three key takeaways. So first of all, what are the challenges of dirty gases and how can they be identified? Secondly, give you an understanding how a possible solution could look like. And last but not least, provide you information about latest wealth innovations. So our speakers today are Jerry Boulder and Juan Enchinales. Both were actively involved in the case which we're presenting you today. With this, I would like to hand over to Jerry, who will give you uh, an introduction on the project. Hello, everybody. This is Jerry, and thanks for being with us today. As regional sales manager in Western Canada, I'm really blessed with a variety of interesting industries to serve. Uh, one of those, and the focus of today's webinar, is the petrochemical industry. Within that sector, the production of specialty plastics, such as polyethylene, are manufactured to create everyday products, such as medical plastics, drinking and food bottles, consumer products. In fact, I bet if you look around where you are right now, in your office or outside or at home, you'll see a stunning variety of plastics that we use every day. Actually, the manufacture of plastics is really complex and requires a mega facility to produce the end product, which in this case are plastic pellets shown in the bottom right of your screen. These are polyethylene, commonly called HDPE, high density polyethylene, and sometimes low density polyethylene. Compressors that are used at a petrochemical site, actually they're part of a big chain of equipment and machines designed to create the plastic pellets that you saw on the last slide. This is where it gets really interesting. The gas ethylene is compressed and pushed through a catalyst where a reaction occurs at really, really high pressure to precipitate a final product, plastic particles. Actually, they literally fall out of the cylinder of the compressor at the end, and then they're extruded into small plastic pellets and shipped out for further use in the industry. Quite simply put, it's gas in at one end, plastic out at the other, and in the middle, a multi-million dollar facility that makes it all happen. Today, we're gonna to focus on a very common problem within this industry, dirty gas. Dirty, sticky gas full of particles that end up resulting in a buildup of debris on moving parts. And in this case, valves in the compressor, causing them to malfunction. You see, a reciprocating compressor uses a series of valves to trap and compress the gas before moving it along to the next stage. However, when a valve stops working, the open and shut action, the machine shuts down and the valves need to be removed and serviced. Now, if you recall from the previous slide, the compressor is just a part of a complex chain of equipment and machines and the whole chain has to stop production when that compressor goes down, making this a really expensive problem to have on site. In this case, our customer was having to shut down this compressor almost every six weeks due to valve failures from a residue buildup on the valve surfaces. The valves 
are described as the heart of the compressor. So like a, a cardiac valve in our body, they're really sensitive. They're one of the most sensitive parts in a compressor. This slide shows an industry survey where a large number of compressors were investigated for shutdown causes. And surprisingly, not so surprisingly, the valves are the first on the list. So the number one cause for unscheduled shutdowns in a compressor are compressor valves. Now it doesn't mean that they're a bad design or the calculation or the sizing is wrong. It just means that when your compressor is operated out of its specified window of normal operation, the valve is usually the first part that gets into trouble. And here's a really good picture of some valves that have a buildup of debris due to dirty, sticky gases. Uh, in this case, all of these plate valves and ring valves were replaced by Burkhart poppet valves, which improve the lifetime and the runtime and the performance of those compressors immediately. Now, without giving away too much more of the presentation, I'd like to hand over this part to my colleague, Juan. Juan, over to you. Thank you very much, Jerry. Hello, everyone. My name is Juan Encinales. I work as a sizing engineer, and I am directly involved with the valve selection and sizing. So what do we need to find the right valve for the right application? We need information about the process, such as the gas composition, the flow rate, as well as the compressor geometry, and so on. The more data that we get, the better the sizing will be. Then we fit all this data into our own developed calculation tool and select the valves according to the results. We also choose the right materials depending on the application. In the case of sealing elements made of plastic, we use materials developed in-house. We do not see ourselves only as suppliers of reciprocating compressor parts, but as providers of integral solutions for different compressor applications. So we integrate our overall expertise and know how to provide the right valve. For a custom valve selection and sizing, we use our state-of-the-art calculation software, which is called ReciPCalc. The valves are modeled mathematically using mechanical and thermodynamic equations to simulate the dynamic behavior of the valve. By choosing the right setup of internal parts, undesired movement of the sealing elements at the opening and closing events, as the one you're seeing right now, can be avoided. And we can prevent premature valve failure. A proper sizing allows us to ensure a satisfactory valve dynamic in which the valves open and close at the right time, resulting in smooth, smooth functioning valves. This is an overview of our current valve portfolio, showing the three main valve types from Burkhardt and the concentric valve used only in India. The three main valve types are interchangeable, which means that they have basically the same outer dimensions. These valves are used for lobby and process gas compressors, as well as for other brand compressors. At Burkhardt, our, all our valves are constantly under development regarding their design or materials. Some of these valves, as the plate valve, are already very well known for a long time. And on the other hand, the youngest valve of the portfolio is the puppet valve. This valve is the one which performs the best in dirty gases. So I am going to focus on this one. This slide shows the assembly of the Burkhardt puppet valve. It consists of the body parts, the valve guard and valve seat as well as the internal parts. So first we have the spring supports, uh, which also act as lift washers. The, the springs with the wasted form, the puppets, the re pre replaceable seat plate, and the north lock washer and nut. So allow me to show you some of the advantages of this type of valve. And I'm going to start with the 
advantages regarding the maintenance. As you can see in this animation, the assembly of the valve is very simple and the service can be done on site without any additional training. With this fact, further cost savings are possible. The, as the valves are field repairable without special tools, no need of specially trained people for the service and no remachining of the body parts is necessary. So now I'm going to talk about the advantages regarding the performance compared to a classical plate valve. The flow, flow stream through a poppet valve is more smooth due to the round shape of the ceiling element. Plate valves have two times 90 degrees deflection of the gas stream compared to two times 45 degrees from poppet valves. So the optimized flow path reduces power loss of the valve and increases the efficiency of the valve and the compressor. With the round puppet head and the flat surface on the seat plate, there is only a contact line between those two parts. This minimized surface decreases all stiction behavior as we know it from plate valve designs. Plastic material has a much higher thermal expansion coefficient than metal. However, with the one-dimensional design of the puppet, even if the puppet shrinks or grows under temperature influence, there is just a contact line between the plastic ceiling element and the metallic ceiling surface. This makes puppets insensitive to thermal expansion. Another important point is that due to the higher lift area and streamlined gas flow, dirt, debris and condensate can pass more easily through the valve and cause less sticky buildup. This reduces the danger of clogging dramatically. In comparison, plate valves tend to clog faster than poppet valves and therefore fail prematurely. On the right, you can see two examples of plate valves used in refinery and polypropylene applications that fail prematurely due to clogging. On the left, we see an example of a puppet valve in a flare gas application in which the valves run for 8,000 hours. And we also see another one in an EOEG reclaim application uh, in which the valves run for 14,000 hours. Uh, in both cases, the valves look pretty dirty but are still fully functional. Now I will hand over back to Jerry and he will tell you the end of this success story. Thank you, Juan. So our solution was to present a custom engineered Burkhart poppet valve with improved performance, optimized performance. As Juan mentioned, there's typically a lot less clogging due to the high lift area and aerodynamic flow path. Due to the construction of the valve, it's easily repaired on site. Uh, our customers love this part of it. It's actually really quite a game changer. You can take apart this valve put in a new kit, and you're literally actually really quite simple. It involves to the site, uh, measuring the existing plate valve, uh, body dimensions only in the pressure. Uh, there are no modifications required. Uh, and this part is really interesting. These valves will fit into any brand compressor. Uh, we've been putting them in all brands of compressors with huge success. So to sum up the customer's feedback on this particular case, the new valves were put in and lasted 10 times. They're field serviceable with a service kit that the staff can use in-house on site. And the production and profit went through due to higher reliability. And more importantly, it frees up critical time and resources for personnel on site to use elsewhere.
Um, the Puppet Valve portfolio is continuously developed to meet customer and market expectations. This is done not only in-house, but also as a collaboration with customers to offer always the best possible solution. Um, as a result of this collaboration, we developed the flow optimized puppet valve. In comparison to the standard puppet valve, it has no center bolt offering space for one more puppet. And in combination with a new guard design results in a better flow. Also higher differential pressures are possible. And uh, we are happy to show you the newest addition to the puppet family. This new type of puppet valve will extend the range when the, where puppet valves can be used. And so far it has been successfully tested in three applications. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Juan and, and Jerry, for your explanation. Um, I would say let's have a quick look into the question box if there is any questions so far. Um, they have given you an insight about the case and how we actually got to the solution. And now um, let's see, let me quickly check on the, on the question. Actually, I found one which it seems to be for you, Juan. Um, for what application is the pop of wealth not a suitable solution? Oh, thanks, Marion. That's a good question. The puppet valves are not suitable for uh, bone dry applications, for example, as nitrogen or um, methane, methane. And why is it not suitable? Is there any particular reason? Yeah, well, this is because um, the puppets are guided within the puppet hole, and if the gas is too dry we will have not enough lubrication between those two parts so uh, we face challenges with these kind of applications okay thank you very much juan um there is one for cherry um there is um will the pop-up wells fit into any compressors are there any special requirements hi marion i'm I'm going to keep my camera off because it seems to be a, a bit of a lag with the internet. So I hope you can hear me okay. Um, no special requirements other than perhaps a machining application to the existing valve chair, or in some cases we replace the valve chair if it becomes an assembly uh, and needs to be installed, uh, perhaps inverted. But other than that, it's a very easy uh, conversion to make on any compressor. Thank you very much. There's another one for you, actually, Jerry. Um, how quickly can you make these valves? What is the process? Yeah, Mary, and typically the process, uh, as I mentioned before, is, is we go to site, we, we do an in-depth investigation um, on the compressor and look at the history. We take some critical measurements on the valve body, the valve cage, the valve ports on the compressor, and we fill out a compressor uh, valve form that then goes to engineering. Uh, part of the information on that form would be the, con the operating conditions of the compressor, um, things like temperature, pressures, uh, confirmation of gases. You know, all this information is really needed to be able to create uh, the custom solution. Uh, and I say that because these valves are not off the shelf. Uh, each one is custom engineered and designed for that particular compressor and the application that it's running in. Thank you very much, Jerry. Um, I see there's another one um, for you, Juan. Um, are the limits the same as for the plate valve? Example, uh, regarding temperatures and pressures? Uh, yes, thank you, Marion. As long as the material stays uh, stay the same, the limit should be equivalent. But uh, in any case, we will check always all parameters when sizing new valves to fit the prevailing conditions of the compressor. All right, thank you very much. Actually, um, yeah, there is another one which 
it, which seems to be quite obvious, where the valve's the only solution in this particular case we just introduced today, or is there anything else? I would say, Jerry, can you answer that one? Yeah, sure, that's a, a really good question. Uh, yeah, in this case, Marion, the valves were the only solution required, but um, we're, we're seeing for the last few years a, a, a massive increase in uh, total compressor engineering revamps. So, so we look at the compressor as a whole system. All the moving parts and the wear parts have to work together in order to function under really demanding uh, and long uh, maintenance overhauls that we're seeing today across the world. Uh, I have customers now that are, that are being uh, requested by uh, management to push their machines to four or even five years. So you can imagine that um, all the parts that are moving in that compressor need to be re-engineered uh, and redesigned. Uh, and this is, goes far beyond what the original OEM specs were on that compressor. Um, and keep in mind that many of those machines are actually more than 20 years old. So the, the technology 20 years ago just simply doesn't work for today's demanding requirements. All right, thank you very much, Jerry. Actually, there's a very long question. I hope you can follow to me. It's, um, it's for you, Juan. Yes. He said, I had an experience of pop-up valves designed for lobby compressor with pure propylene gas melted. It was nylon and happened at first stage compression with discharge temperature around 130 degrees Celsius. Is that normal or due to wrong selection of material? Also, I know Redura now is the latest material developed as solution on the polymer family. Is Redura offered inside valve components? So it's a, lo a long question. I hope you could follow. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to start by answering the second part of the question, which is about Redura materials. Yep. So we actually don't use um, those materials in our valves. Um, it, in, they are used in our rings and packings. Regarding the first part of the question, um, it was a poppet valve failure, uh, 130 degrees at discharge temperature with nylon puppets. Yeah, uh, we faced some challenges because our older nylon material uh, had a temperature limit of 120 degrees. So now you're using a new material that has a higher temperature limit up to 150 degrees. So what we do nowadays is um, that we use this new material so we wouldn't need to change the nylon puppets. Uh, another possible solution that we did before upgrading to this new material was to use peak puppets on the discharge site uh, because they are more resistant to higher temperatures. They go up to 200 degrees. So um, let's summarize and say that uh, nowadays we wouldn't have the same problems as this person experience. Okay, great. Um, I hope uh, this person uh, could take all the notes for, the, for his question. Um, just one more Question for you, Juan. Are these um, pop-up valves suitable for high-speed uh, high compressors? Do we have experiences in that? Uh, well, there's always a definition what high-speed is. With pop-up valves, we can go up to 1,000 RPM. Um, we have made some experiences beyond, but uh, yeah, I, I would say the, the limit so far is 1000 RPM without adventuring too much farther. Okay, um, maybe we can revert to that person and give more information in a later stage. Um, in this case, uh, I would say thank you very much for all your questions. Just in case we haven't answered all your questions, we will of course come back to you later on after the sessions uh, personally. That's why it's always important to leave the name so we have a chance to go back to you again. So for those um, actually who came in through the social media, either LinkedIn or any other tool, um, please make sure you will follow the registration process on our tech exchange so we can make sure that you will receive all the information about further tech exchanges in the future. And you will also get automatic uh, invitations for our next tech exchange. 
Um, for those who are already registered, of course, you're already on the list, so you will get information um, automatic. Um, last but not least, um, I would uh, first of all like to thank you um, to our speakers for the great presentation. And secondly, I would like to, um, uh, to thank our, our clients who are listening to us um, for all these great questions. I hope we, we could have given you an impression on, uh, on this case and how we finally solved it. And therefore, um, we are already at the end of the presentation. Of course, um, this is recorded as we said previously. It will be distributed later on on social media. And of course, you will also get a link um, so you can share it with your colleagues or, or look at it again later on. Um, last but not least, in order to improve our webinar, we kind of ask for your feedback by answering the survey, which you will receive in the next days. Um, very much we're looking forward to hear from you and to learn about your interests and also your comments. So we will choose the right topic for our next tech exchange. Again, thank you very much for your time and hope uh, you liked this tech exchange and hope to see you again in our next session. In this case, um, I will close the session and I wish you a pleasant day and goodbye. Thank you.